Hello, and welcome to my series on the CT of thoracoabdominal emergencies. I'm Dr. Benjamin Strong, the Chief Medical Officer of Virtual Radiologic, or VRAD. I started my career with an internal medicine residency and followed that with three years of work as an emergency physician. I then returned to training for a radiology residency and a fellowship in body and MSK MRI. In the course of my over 20 years in radiology, I have worked as a private practice radiologist, an academic radiologist, and for the last 17 years as a teleradiologist for VRAD. I have been the chief medical officer there for eight years and am licensed to practice in all 50 states. Here is our agenda for this series, which I have broken into nine sessions of eight cases each, all grouped by organ system. Session six, colonic emergencies. We'll begin with a case of intussusception. Of course, in adults, intussusception usually is accompanied by a lead point lesion. And this one, of course, is a classic. A lobulated fat density here in the colon which represents an intraluminal lipoma. In the next cut down, you can actually see tubular structures within the lumen of the colon, which represent intussuscepted small bowel and actually appendix alongside it. Uh, coming out the backside of the intussusception, you will see two uh, tubular structures, one that represents a dilated appendix with an appendical lip and the other adjacent to it the dilated terminal ilium. That'll be more apparent here on the cine. So there is our fat density mass. Here are the two tubular structures, one of which is an appendix and the other the dilated terminal ilium. Let's look at that again. Of course, that's probably mechanical appendicitis and not true infectious appendicitis. There are the two tubular structures becoming terminal ilium and appendix. So that is a lipoma with resultant intussusception and sort of a pseudo appendicitis. Our next case is another intussusception. This one, a presentation of a colonic adenocarcinoma. So you're tipped immediately by the presence of this irregular hypodense liver lesion that almost certainly represents a metastasis. And lower down, you can see this thick-walled target appearance just beneath the hepatic flexure that represents a colonic intussusception. Here is the cine, and you'll see the wall thickening there and the telescoping bowel resulting in that target appearance. Perhaps even more apparent on the coronal, there it is. You can see the thick-walled colonic mass intussuscepting along with the direction of peristalsis up into the hepatic flexure of the colon. And there again, that liver lesion. And there the telescoped bowel with dramatic wall thickening. I think enough for you to say definitively that there is concern for a mass Obviously, the presence of that liver lesion helps you to make that determination. So that is a case of intussusception due to metastatic colonic adenocarcinoma. Our next case is a cecal volvulus, but an unusual one. You are looking at the cecum here in the left upper quadrant. It has herniated across the midline through the foramen of Winslow. You can see the twisted length of ascending colon passing right through there, just above the level of the first portion of the duodenum. Here is the video. There is the twisted portion of ascending colon. And again, the blind ending cecum there in the left upper quadrant and left abdomen. Fairly unusual hernia and volvulus, but a pretty typical appearance of that. 
And that is a sepal volvulus with herniation through the foramen of Winslow. Our next case is an epiploic appendagitis. There is a fat density here in the anterior pelvis, clearly outlined by extensive mesenteric stranding. Lower down, you can see that stranding extends to involve the sigmoid colon and even has some associated wall thickening uh, that is inflammatory in nature. And here on the video, again, that fat density outlined by stranding, which extends down to the sigmoid colon. It's easy to confuse these inflammatory changes with other pathologies. And if you fail to spot that outlined fat density there in the center of it all, you could give this any number of differential possibilities. So the importance of epiploic appendagitis is not, of course, that it's life-threatening. In fact, it's quite obviously not. Uh, but making this diagnosis is extremely helpful, ends ongoing diagnostic testing, alleviates everyone's worries about more serious pathology. So that is an important diagnosis, epiploic appendagitis. Our next case is one we've probably all seen, a diverticulitis with a colovesical fistula. There is wall thickening and extensive diverticulosis involving the sigmoid colon here. And we have the nice treat here of actually identifying not only the gas-filled bladder, but the actual tract extending from the sigmoid colon to the bladder. Here it is on the coronal, the thick-walled sigmoid colon, the air-filled or gas-filled bladder, and its adjacent associated fistula. Here we have the cine. You see the wall thickening and diverticulosis, and there is that tract leading to the gas-filled bladder. We've got that on coronal as well wall thickening, and there is a nice visualization of that tract into the bladder. The differential on this, uh, of course, includes inflammatory bowel disease and colon cancer, but I think in this setting, you can pretty confidently say that diverticulosis is your number one choice. So that's diverticulitis with a colovesical fistula. Our next case is an acute presentation of ulcerative colitis. This patient has an extensive ahaustral colon, featureless colon with mucosal enhancement throughout, a pretty classic appearance of chronic ulcerative colitis. But this patient presented with bowel obstruction, and there is clearly a length of tight stricturing with enhancement and mucosal, if not mural, thickening here in the transverse colon. Of course, chronic ulcerative colitis patients are at great risk for malignancies and typically undergo constant colonoscopic surveillance. Uh, this patient, unfortunately, did not uh, have that degree of follow-up. So you can see another example of that featureless ahaustral colon, uh, just essentially a lead pipe sigmoid colon that's pretty characteristic. Many of these patients with the chronic inflammation can form strictures. So this is particularly helpful. That degree of wall thickening and enhancement is quite notable and is typically not present in a benign ulcerative colitis stricture. So let's look at that one more time. That short segment of wall thickening and enhancement clearly causing significant obstruction with the proximal colon dilated relative to the distal. All right, that is a case of chronic ulcerative colitis presenting with an obstructing secondary malignancy. Our next case is one of pseudomembranous colitis. 
There is extensive wall thickening throughout the colon, but note anteriorly that tiny dot of intraperitoneal gas. The intraperitoneal gas in this case is multifocal, but it remains quite subtle, and it resulted in a dramatic alteration in this patient's prognosis and treatment. So note again the wall thickening that is present throughout the entirety of the colon, and that is worth noting anytime I see wall thickening involving the entire colon, I think first of pseudomembranous colitis. There are very few other things that will cause this extensive, uh, this diffuse, a wall thickening of the colon, and that is a diagnostic tip I have uh, utilized many, many times in my career. So here again, that extensive wall thickening with some mucosal enhancement and even the suggestion of pneumatosis in small areas. But note especially the anterior collections of free intraperitoneal gas, just tiny little collections there that tell the story of perforation. And it's something you really need to watch out for in pseudomembranous colitis. The inflamed and infected bowel wall becomes so friable that perforations can be not only common, but very small and very subtle on scan. So again, appreciate the extent of that wall thickening, which you see everywhere throughout the colon, and those small foci of gas anteriorly. So that is a case of pseudomembranous colitis with perforation. I thought I would simply add this. When you do uh, colonic pathology, you pretty much have to include this sort of thing. Just as when you lecture on the orbits, you have to include a foreign body case. Uh, so this is a tour of the farmer's market that I added here as a seventh inning stretch. I've color-coded things to make it more apparent, but our fellow on the left has a carrot in his rectum. Uh, the fellow in the middle uh, actually used an apple and the guy on the right, probably the uh, established standard cucumber. So some interesting appearance of produce on CT scan as our seventh inning stretch there. Our final case is a case of heroin overdose by a patient attempting to smuggle heroin in this patient actually boarded a plane into the United States and upon its landing was obtunded and unable to disembark in standard fashion. We'll see why that is. On the lung windows, there is clearly airspace consolidation in a dependent lung base, certainly suggestive of aspiration. On soft tissue windows, you'll see that the ascending colon especially is completely filled with these hyperdense entities uh, about the size of corks. But also note there's one that is beginning to dissolve that has the same configuration, the same, in fact, hypodense wrapper, but is beginning to dissolve. That is a packet of ingested heroin that is being digested and resulted in this patient's heroin overdose. Here it is on the 3D, showing you the extent of those throughout the ascending colon. There are even one or two in the rectum on their way out, which you'll see in the cine. So most likely, this aspiration pneumonia resulted from either the ingestion process, uh, swallowing these without chewing, which is kind of traumatic, or it could be related to the heroin overdose that came later, and this patient's obtundation with probable aspiration. There on the soft tissue windows, you can see just how numerous those are, and also identify those that have ruptured and are dissolving. There's one there and another right there. So at least two of these actually broke open and resulted in this patient's inadvertent overdose. So we'll look at those one more time. Right there anteriorly, and then right below it another. All right, there's the 3D, again, letting you see the extent, and note those two in the rectum that are just on their way out. 
All right, that is a case of inadvertent heroin overdose. And that concludes session six, colonic emergencies. Thanks for watching.